The Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. I'm Cindy Fernelli, the Executive Director of the Center for Audit Quality, and I'm very pleased today to have as our guest Gene Rogers, who is the founder and the chair of the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, or the SASB as we call it colloquially, and for six years you were also the CEO. So Gene, we have a lot of talk to talk about, so thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Cindy. So I'm going to jump right in on a blog post that you wrote at the beginning of this year. And the headline was, Standard Setting is a Marathon, Not a Sprint. And yet I noticed that the SASB is getting ready to codify a, a host of standards by various industries on sustainability accounting. So are we near the finish line or where are we in the journey? Well, it's definitely a journey. That's a good word for it. We are, I think like graduation, it's really a commencement. We're just, after about six or seven years worth of work, uh, standard setting formally, just getting to the point where we have a set of standards on the table that can be used by the capital markets participants, which means that from this point on, they'll really evolve with market feedback and, and market input. But I think we're at a, a really transformational moment where investors are, are going to be incorporating these standards into a new generation of ratings, analysis, products that are very focused on materiality. And the insights from that will spur a whole new uh, range of investor behavior and driving capital to more sustainable outcomes. So I think we'll see some really interesting trends developing, uh, moving from transparency to performance, which is really what SASB was founded on. Excellent. Well, we look forward to continuing the journey with you. It's been very exciting thus far. Thank you. Uh, we were very pleased to have you participate in the CAQ's 10-year anniversary last year in January. And you noted there that prior to SASB's uh, inception and the work that you've been doing over the last six years, conversations about environmental, social, and governance issues were about just that issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you went on to say that at SASB, you put the user at the center uh, of the conversation and turned sustainability on its side. So give us a little more flavor of what you meant by that and um, how the SASB has reshaped the conversation. Sure. Um, it sounds, sounds very tantalizing that we put the user and sort of flipped it on its head, but really, literally, that's what it, we did. We created a materiality map which took all the possible sustainability issues, and there are hundreds of them, from environmental and social and governance um, issues, and we mapped them literally against industries to see which ones could be financially material within a particular industry. And the first time we did this, we didn't know what we were gonna see. We didn't know if it was gonna be uh, across the board, every issue mattered, or if it was gonna be a blank sheet and nothing was gonna be financially material. But we found a pattern that gave us the ability to really begin to talk about these issues in the context of an industry and um, how that industry is likely to be affected by macro fa macroeconomic factors like climate risk um, or other cross-cutting issues like cybersecurity, human capital management, and so forth. And by developing that matrix, that materiality map, what it really enabled us to do was to speak the language of investors, because as I always like to say, analysts cover industries, they don't cover issues, and they're looking for factors that are gonna be material by industry, and uh, they use the language of, of business and, and financial materiality. So by flipping this matrix on its head, and instead of talking about issues, talking about where they're material in industries, we began to speak the language of investors, and that's made all the difference. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and note that you have a PhD and a master's in environmental engineering, and your undergraduate was in civil engineering. So you are not an auditor. 
Well, uh, it, it is true. My background is engineering through and through, and I worked for many years in the field of sustainable development, which by its nature requires measuring to, to manage impacts. And so I was very familiar with different metrics and measurement techniques that were used in different industries. But I think what I really brought to this particular challenge of market infrastructure was systems thinking and really um, seeing a way to, uh, by articulating what mattered industry by industry, create infrastructure for the capital markets to be able to see uh, trends, risks across a portfolio. So Jean, with your engineering background, uh, it occurs to me that that is a diverse type of skill set that uh, we typically don't think of in the accounting and auditing space. So tell me what kind of skill sets you think is, are going to be important as we look at the future of sustainability and auditing and accounting for that matter. As we look to the future, I think in this space, um, it is absolutely true that what gets measured gets managed. And we're beginning to measure a much broader range of factors than uh, one would traditionally um, be taught in financial accounting. And I think that um, the people who will really, really succeed in this field will have an appetite for understanding how to measure and verify and account for things that really drive business decisions, competitiveness, um, and things that our investors are really interested in across the broad span of environmental and social disciplines. So it's going to take a much more open mindset uh, and much more flexibility because the types of metrics and measurements are much more nascent in their development. Sometimes the science isn't there. Sometimes the understanding of the techniques to measure them isn't there. And sometimes there's just disagreement on what's the right metric. There's multiple ways to measure water, for example, and, and many, many more uh, ways to measure human capital. So it will take a certain um, flexibility and a certain appetite for um, really uh, becoming immersed in these new disciplines. As a standard setter, I've also had to learn many other disciplines and surround myself with experts in financial accounting and standard setting. We've learned a great deal from the FASB and the IASB, for example, on process. Um, I've also had to learn securities law because that's the framing in which we work for disclosure. And uh, I've had to learn a lot from companies and industry participants about what really matters to them and how they measure it in the field. And so um, we've de developed a great multidisciplinary staff, and I think uh, those qualities will be really important going forward. Well, Jean, or should I say, uh, uh, Dr. Rogers, thank you so much for joining us for this PIF. It's a really important work that you're doing, and uh, we very much appreciate your partnership and continuing to work with you. Thank future. you, Cindy. It's been a pleasure. And with that, that's the end of this Profession in Focus. Thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you next time.